She wore a white midi dress, black polka dots, black thigh-high go-go boots like a mod girl, all decked out in full Carnaby Street fashion style, dancing the shag at a Who concert 1965, Shepherd's Bush, London, shaking her hips like a go-go dancer on the Hullabaloo television show on that stage in front of DJ Carino Friday night at the Pyramid Club. We danced together. Don't you forget about me, crowded house, while well, curious onlookers snap selfies with us of a, on their pink iPhones. I just hate that, don't you, when people take photos of you? There are literally thousands of selfies with me in them. <coughs> yeah, me too. She whispers in that deep, husky voice of the kink's favorite girl, Lola. She walked like a woman, but she talked like a man? Then in a low, rich, baritone <laughs> register, she says her name is Curran. She hides her face behind the long, black, synthetic locks of her 60s vintage chair wig. She has one great ass. I'm here usually on Saturdays, but I came here tonight because of the blizzard they're predicting for tomorrow. Well, it's midnight. I'm turning into a pumpkin, so I'm out of here. Maybe I'll see you again next week on some Saturday night. She is one very hot young black chick. A Diana Ross, a Diane Carroll, Leslie Uggams. Jay Davidson. My first wife, Valerie, accused me of suffering from the cheerleader syndrome. As an outcast in high school, I never got the opportunity to date the prom girls, the debutantes, the homecoming queen, the cheerleaders during high school. I was the personification of the character Booger in Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> Call me Booger, a social pariah wearing my dad's cast off black leather motorcycle jacket from the earlier days of his misspent youth. An old beat-up brown slouch hat that any toothless sodomistic hillbilly in the film Deliverance would be proud to wear. And a pair of badly scuffed combat boots. My head was shaved down to the scalp like a New Jersey skinhead. Compliments of Uncle Sam, my recent Coast Guard boot camp experience haircut for the previous summer before returning to complete my secondary education. I looked like a serial killer. My classmates avoided me like the plague, which was my intention. I wanted to talk to no one. No one wants to talk to me. Years later, attending Columbia Nursing School, I became the center of attention. The attention of every single female classmate in nursing school. The cliche, I wouldn't fuck you if you were the last man on earth. Wake up and smell the coffee, sister! Newsflash, I am the last man on earth! 124 women in the graduating class, five guys, one was deported back home to his native Japan. One dropped out to care for his elderly parents in Florida. One gay, one married, one in a very committed, long-distant relationship with his girlfriend over in Cairo, Egypt. There was a six, but he never even showed up for the first day of classes. That left me, Big Fucking Mike, the last man on the face of the earth. It's either me or that deluxe variable three-speed battery-operated phallic symbol you keep stashed for emergency purposes hidden under your panties in the top drawer of your underwear dresser. I was banging one nursing student, divorced single mother, ten years older than me with a teenage son, also another nurse at the same time, who was a student president of the local chapter of INCAR, the International Committee Against Racism, the campus organizational front for the Soviet Communist Party at Columbia University. Yes, kids, there were still real-life communists back in 1980. And I was also fucking my future first wife, Valerie, at the bar and college campus. You know, the one who branded me with the cheerleader complex label? Well, just don't tell Valerie. But I was also paying two of her BFFs, Lisa and Lisa. Just don't tell Valerie. Many years in a divorce later, I plunged dick first into the downtown art star scene, entering a long, twisted series of sexual relationships with a succession of stand-up comedians, burlesque queens, nude performance artists, poets, writers, playwrights, singers, songwriters, Writers, actresses, models, musicians, painters, art historians, college professors, cabaret variety, nightclub entertainers, trapeze acrobats, professional dancers, strippers, porn starlets, escorts, courtesans, call girls, BDS and M dominatrixes, hermaphrodites, saint worshippers, wicked witch white right craft <laughs> practitioners, Jerry King masters, Conan and sideshow feature stars, topless paparazzi, opera sopranos, and rock and roll divas. You know what I'm talking about. I guess my ex was right after all. I'm overcompensating for my outsider status high school years, dating the adult equivalent of cheerleaders, the glam girls, the glamorous types. I suppose that's why I was so immediately attracted to Curran with her masculine voice, her polysynthetic black share wig, and very prominent Adam's apple. In a word, glamour. She's very glamorous. 
just like the high school cheerleaders I never got the chance to bang back in my teenage years. So wish me luck on my next Saturday night's rendezvous with the Pyramid Club. I'm going out hunting for some glamour! <laughs>